sunk in Thalestry's arms the nymph he found, her eyes dejected and her hair unbound. Full over their heads the swelling bag he rent, and all the furies issued at the vent. Belinda burns with more than mortal ire, and fierce Thalestry's fans the rising fire. O oh, wretched maid, she spread her hands and cried, while Hampton's echoes, wretched maid, reply. Was it for this you took such constant care, the bodkin, comb, and essence to prepare? For this your locks in paper durance bound, for this with torturing irons wreathed around, for this with fillets strained your tender head, and bravely bore the double loads of lead. Gods, shall the ravisher display your hair, while the fops envy and the ladies stare, honor forbid, at whose unrivaled shrine, he's pleasure, virtue, all our sex resign, methinks already I your tears survey, already hear the horrid things they say, already see you a degraded toast, and all your honor in a whisper loss, how shall I then your helpless fame defend? Twill then be infamy to seem your friend, and shall this prize to inestimable prize, exposed through crystal to the gazing eyes, and heightened by the diamond circling rays, on that rapacious hand forever blaze, sooner shall grass in Hyde Park Circus grow, and wits take lodgings in the sound of bow, sooner let earth, air, sea to chaos fall, men, monkeys, lap, dogs, parrots, perish all. She said, then raging to Sir Plume repairs, and bids her bow demand the precious hairs, Sir Plume of amber snuff box justly vain, and the nice conduct of a clouded cane, with earnest eyes and round and thinking face, he first the snuff box opened, then the case, and thus broke out, Why, Lord, why, what the devil? Z, D, S, damn the lock, for gad you must be civil, play goant, tis past a jest, ne prithy pox, give her the hair, he spoke, and wrapped his box. It grieves me much, replied the peer again, who speaks so well should ever speak in vain, but by this lock, this sacred lock I swear, which never more shall join its parted hair, which never more its honors shall renew. Clip from the lovely head where late it grew, that while my nostrils draw the vital air, this hand which won it shall forever wear. He spoke, and speaking, in proud triumph spread the long contended honors of her head. But Umbriel, hateful gnome, forbears not so. He breaks the vial whence the sorrows flow. Then see, the nymph in beauteous grief appears, her eyes half languishing, half drowned in tears. On her heaved bosom hung her drooping head, which with a sigh she raised, and thus she said, Forever cursed be this detested day, which snatched my best, my favorite curl away. Happy, ah, ten times happy had I been, if Hampton Court these eyes had never seen. Yet am not I the first mistaken maid, my love of courts to numerous ills betrayed. Oh, had I rather unadmired remain, in some lone isle or distant northern land, where the gilt chariot never marks the way, where none learn ombre, none ear taste bahia, there kept my charms concealed from mortal eye, like roses that in deserts bloom and die. What moved my mind with youthful lords to roam? Oh, had I stayed and said my prayers at home, 'Twas this the morning omens seemed to tell, 
Thrice from my trembling hand the patch box fell. The tottering china shook without a wind. Nay, pole sat mute, and chalk was most unkind. A self to warn me of the threats of fate. In mystic visions, now believed too late, see the poor remnants of these slighted hairs. My hands shall rend whatever thy rapini spares. These into sable ringlets taught to break, once gave new beauties to the snowy neck. The sister lock now sits uncouth alone, and in its fellow's fate foresees its own. Uncurled it hangs, the fatal shears demands, and tempts once more thy sacrilegious hands. O oh, hadst thou, cruel, then content to seize hairs less in sight, or any hairs but these.